Hello everybody, my name is Rachel Grapta and I welcome you to another tank review. Today we have the Scorpion Tier 7 American Tank Destroyer, which was this week's special offer. Uh, yeah, basically you got it with some gold and some premium days, which is kind of neat I guess if you need those, but I think it is really important to say that we are now only focusing on the tank. Um, Please don't freak out because of my hair, which I cut for cause of the military, and my non-existing headset, which I lost because of the military. But yeah, to that we have a walk. But yes, the M56 Scorpion is, as I said already, a tier 7 tank destroyer. And as always, I did 10 games, which is roughly not much, to be honest. To, to really say, to have everything covered on a tank. But I have to say I had tier 9 games, tier 7 games, tier 8 games and stuff like this. And right now I really have to say I personally enjoy this tank. It has some drawbacks but I really think that the gun is making up for many of those. And yeah, first to the stats as always it has 500, 820 hit points which is actually not really much. Also what is not really much is the seriously low amount of weight. This tank weights 7.4 ton 7.5 tons. Let me have a look because this thing is as <laughs> light as the ELC. And this should be something in my opinion. But we are also going to compare it a little bit with other tier 7 premium tanks like the SU-12244, ISU-122S and the E25 as well as the T28 heavy tank comes up. Because the M56 Scorpion is the first um, with money available, tier um, money available, tank destroy, no, no tier restriction here. It is just available for money. Because the first tier um, TD for the Americans was the T28 heavy tank concept. And it actually is quite heavy to get in some points. But yeah, I think we get those three tanks here now covered a little bit. And we go back to the M56. Do we have everything? Nope. Still one more missing. It's the E25. Well. As you can see from all tanks, it has the lowest amount of hit points with 820. The, the, the weight is ridiculous, slow, um, small, and the engine has also not that high of an engine power. It has only 200 horsepower to compare to 700, 960, 600 and 500. But we don't need to forget that in the end it doesn't matter how many horsepower you have, it's important how many excuse me, how many HP to ton ratio you have. In the end, everything comes down to ratios. And this thing has 26.6 horsepower to ton. This is a really good value. It, it, even the E25 is worse in that part. But what is bad about this tank is the top speed. It's only 45 kilometers per hour. And as you can see, it's, it's even average to the Russian tanks with 37.5 from the 44 version and the ISU with 43. The T28 heavy, cancer, heavy tank concept is obviously quite slow. Where meanwhile, the E25 is really fast with 56 kilometers. And this is, in my opinion, one point to criticize. The Scorpion has a really good HP to ton ratio, but it doesn't feel so agile. I really see that you can go around the map really good and you will also see it in gameplay which I unfortunately lost but it was really good, trust me in that one. But it feels like a British medium tank, like the F3402. You have a really good HP to turn ratio but at 40 kilometers it's over, you are not fast anymore and it's just like meh. This is my opinion, well, a quite high point to criticize. But now to the traverse speed. The traverse speed is 40 degrees per second, which is again on the lower average, as you can see, except for the T28 heavy, can, heavy tank concept, but this tank has 203 millimeters of front. Whole armor. Hmm. No armor. 
you have one millimeter of armor basically the armor is only here to protect stuff from getting wet when it's raining i think i don't even think that this gun shield is any worth against something like a gun especially the gun which i saw <laughs> this week in the military we got a 12.7 millimeter a machine gun and I don't think that this gun job will hold off those bullets <laughs> but we go to another thing which is in my opinion something really special about and we are just going to finish everything those you saw that it's average but quite special in my opinion now we are going to open the gun files of every tank because I think the gun on this tank is unique because because it's unique in the sense of it's Average unique. We have a pea shooter on the E25. We have hard hitting punches on the Russian tanks. We have a 105 millimeter gun and a one and a 90 millimeter gun. And as you can see, it has the second lowest damage but the best penetration. I really have to say the penetration on this thing is amazing under every premium tier 7 tank destroyer and even under other tank destroyers in this tier in this certain tier it is really good 219 millimeters of penetration i don't know it for sure but it's one of the best on through all tier 7 tanks and that's why you literally don't need the premium ammunition which is the 275 millimeter heat ammunition and as you can see it's already standing out of all those guns as well. You also have a really good fire rate. You have 7.69 huh, huh, shots per minute, which is, in my opinion, a really good value. And with that, you have a DPM with, with 240 damage of 1600. The DPM is not that good, but in my opinion, it doesn't really need it. You have a really good penetration on that thing. You have it really accurate it's, it's the second most accurate gun in all those tier 7 tank destroyers a 0 0.33 and i really think you also feel that the aim time is really good with two seconds and the gun handling also feels really well because you have a really good arc of traverse you have excellent gun depression and this is one point i really want to point out on that thing it has minus 10 gun depression on an paper tank which is small and I was really surprised when I saw this first it has really this gun impression makes it so much more enjoyable to play because you can peek out behind the hill and you only see your gun shield makes it harder to hit you and harder to spot you because you only have two points to sp of spotting you have the gun barrel and the gun shield which is where our points of spotting being located and overall it also is actually not a big tank as you can see it is not really much bigger than the e25 and i also feel this in the camera rating on this thing i really think one big drawback is the fuel range it's only 350 but we all know they nerfed quite of many of these fuel ranges and yeah russians don't have fuel range at all mostly I use it with the binoculars telescope because you have a really good angle and that's why I think on this crew it will be also great to have the fuel range perk but you need to remember this is a crew for my T1 E4 so it's basically more suited for brawling because I sometimes play the E4 like a heavy but yeah I know I have come over crew because it's a TD in the end and they are not really working well together in my opinion. When you are going for brawling on the E4, you will have troubles with the crew of the E4 on this tank because this tank is the only purpose is sniping. Sniping, sniping, sniping. It's really only a gun carrier. And yeah, I think I can summarize from the stats that the gun handling is really good. The crew layout is a little bit fucked up because basically you are taking an E4 or E3 crew which are brawler tanks into a sniping tank also the top speed is easily reached and I think this could be a little bit better top speed is a minus point but gun handling is a big plus gun depression gun accuracy gun penetration aim time 
And I think right now it's time to see what I did in 10 games. I did them all together. 3600 mid W8 rating, 60% win chance, which is, I think, decent. And yeah, quite some experience earned and damage dealt. <laughs> Also, you can see I have 1050 mid experience, which is quite high in my average, as you can see. <laughs> and I already got nothing on the mark of excellence, because there are not many tanks out there, but we got an Iodine's medal. And in 10 out of 10 games, I was able to do more than 820 damage. And I also think this is something to point out. This probably because I think I am a good player on one side, it is because I'm quite a good player on the one side, and on the other side this tank is, in my opinion, a really good sniper and you should use this to your advantage. As you can see, 70% hit rate, damage ratio is 3, destruction ratio 4. We are going to have a look at the maximum damage per battle, the 3000 damage game, and as you can see, I, the, the average score is 2000 damage. Obviously, it will go down a little bit because there will be games where you get one shot by EO, for example, the new tier 6 heavy tank. But when you keep them on distance, they can't really harm you, especially with those penetration values 219 AP, 275 H, heat, H, heat, yeah, heat, I wanted to say. But yeah, these are the general stats on this tank. And I think. We are going right now to jump into the gameplay scene, which you're probably wondering of. So, be right back. So, here we are in the gameplay scene of the M56 Scorpion. We are on the map Winterberg and I really do have to say, as a spoiler, we're going to lose this game. But still, it was in the end an ace tanker in a lost game. I think this is pretty important to note. What is also really important to note is that the Scorp um, Scorpion do have a really good accuracy, but it has some problems sometimes. I, I really made many shots, he pot shots, but I didn't aim for real. And here I was trying to see the maximum gun elevation, which is also quite decent. I don't know if, I'm not sure if I got the right, if it got really right, but yeah. Um, I also made some quite many shots which were not really um, aimed in and that's why I only had 60% accuracy, which is actually not that good. But for example, there are also shots like this where I just tried to do my best. And also some shots like this where an SG100 with a much less inaccurate gun hits and I don't. But yeah, that's the shot, that's totally the shot. And as you can see, we already claim the first victim. And I think it's also quite cool to see that you were obviously not spotted in the first place. But also that the shells travel at a quite good velocity. And also that you quite have a decent amount of shells. You have 26 plus 10, 36, 41 shells in this tank. And I think this is 41 or 42? No, I shot twice. I think it's 42. Excuse me. Which is decent, especially with the reload time of 6.7 seconds. But as I said, this tank trades damage over reliability, or to be reliable. That you are more or less an accurate tank with a really good penetration, as I said this already. 219 AP, it's 275 heat. Um, in these 10 games, I shot one heat round on an IS-3 and yeah, already shots like this, I just bumped them probably. It was only one shot but it didn't connect it, so yeah, I can't really say much about the heat ammunition but tier 9 games I encountered totally sufficient gun, totally enough penetration. As you can see right now it's good that it's a so slow game but yeah, right now we have the ability to shoot at the enemies. Again, after waiting some time. <laughs> after waiting roughly two minutes. And also something to really note out, to point out, is that you have a really good gun traverse angle. And also, as I said, the gun is 
decent in accuracy, we will see that it also has some missteps um, sooner or later against an S uh, against a T50. And yeah, right now I'm still searching for some victims. As I said, also I'm doing quite many fails on my side. But I really got a decent hit there with burning them. And here, unfortunately, the shell was going a little bit too much down. But it doesn't really matter. We are going to finish him with the S35CA. As you can see in the feed. And as you can see, the shells are really fast and many are good in, how should I say, um, pre aiming. It's pretty decent. And now you can see the T50 is a scout tank. And we did do a pot shot and it hit quite well and after only after we shot we were spotted right now i probably did something not that genius because i went in the open field and got hit by the t25 dash 2 twice and as i also can see that you do have some weak what's it called um weak modules because it's a compact vehicle, it's a small vehicle. As you can see, the 25 is roughly the same size. It's a little bit smaller. And you also can see that the acceleration is pretty good. Just the top speed isn't, in my opinion. But now we will also see something really cool about the camouflage. 165 meters, some bushes in the way. But he does not spot me. And with some proper aiming, we get the third kill, 1800 damage and only now we got spotted because, oh boy, my most hated enemy. Now we also can see we did some pot shots and also some fails obviously like, uh, Raging Raptor you know lead targets, no, I don't lead. And now it is over for our little shoebox friend. And as you can see right now, we need also to fight against another artillery piece. And as you probably know me by now, or even if you new are new here, I am a player which really do likes to use high explosives. I call them tactical HE. And as you can see right now, we do got lucky. We are backing up a little bit. We tried to trick the GB Panther to think that we come from another side did our shot and did a high roll, 360 damage, but yeah, the HE is sufficient. And uh, now, yeah, we are going to lose, because our R-44 is going to die as well, because he is an AFK tomato. Reports to that guy, because don't be AFK, don't be AFK, especially right now, he could went into some, into cover, because then we could easily turn that fight. The hacker one needed to go out and would be flanked by me. So harsh. And right now, this game started to be a cat and mouse game. That's why I'm speeding it a little bit up. And yeah, I got a little bit catched off guard because right now the enemies are not coming from the front like I as expected them to do. They're coming from the side. And no, this is not the only one. And we also receive a shot. And right now, it's going to be yeah, a cat and mouse game till I die. So, as you can see, the acceleration is pretty darn good. The turn time of the normal tracks is decent. But as you can see, at 40, 44 kilometers per hour, it's nothing more it's uh, as i said it's like a Br british medium tank on tier 10 fe4202 you don't get any faster than this which is in my opinion a little bit annoying because it has a super good hp to ton ratio but yeah and right now as i said we are doing a cat and mouse game a little bit till um till i die obviously there was our AFK all 44 as you can see he didn't move a little bit. And yeah, I can't see anybody and that's why 
Yeah, I went for the cap because sooner but later it's going to be capped and I try to probably get some pot shots in like trying to be sneaky coming from the side from the one line get some shots into the base but it didn't work as I wanted to as you can see I position myself here and so nope I don't have clear shots onto the base so next time you're playing this map you don't have clear shots on the base and yeah I got spotted by the MX M4 I made some evasive maneuvers to try not to get spotted by him Tiger 1 was in a stupid position to spot me again and yeah right now it's going to be over I get flanked by Sture Emil get hit by this one as well so yeah this was the game but what did I get in this game? I got an ace tanker, which is pretty good. I got 60,791 credits. Basically, it's a really good credit maker in my opinion, but also a fun vehicle. 3,000 damage, obviously the fire of effect medal, as I said, 10 out of 10. High caliber and a Nadine's medal, which basically says I killed all of the enemy team's scout. And they need to be at least three of them. Yeah, pretty decent. As I said, only 6% accuracy. Meh. Try to carry our team, but with three guys not doing any damage, especially one of them was a high tier, an IS. Yeah, it was hard. We did roughly half of our damage from more than 300 meters, which also shows that this tank is actually a pretty good sniper. You don't really have a high amount of repair costs. 5,500 for a totally destroyed vehicle and yeah I also got um, 7,900 ammunition costs. The ammunition is quite expensive. Unfortunately it is but we can't do that much against it. Also you can see we got roughly 2,000 credit um, experience which all went right to my American TD crew and yeah I think I need to say that in a conclusion this tank has roughly 360 sorry I need to say that 360 um, ammunition costs for one AP shot which is actually okay in my opinion but in conclusion I have to say this tank is decent it is a good sniper it has really good mobility except the drawback is you only reach 40 kilometers roughly and then it's sensei it's nothing more Obviously a drawback is literally no armor and don't get rammed by anybody, but I don't really count this as a drawback because it's the style of the tank. It's it's something it's an yeah, it's a Waffenträger. It's like the Remetal Borsig. Just the Remetal Borsig is slower than this tank. And I'm used to this and I really do like also the playstyle. Probably call me a coward for camping like this, but I really do like this sneaky type of position playing. Like went to one position to another, get some pot shots, go in another position and try to trick the enemy, which I tried in the last game. Do you think is this tank coming again into the live server? It will, because I literally only saw myself today in this 10 games. I don't saw any other Scorpion. There will be, th this tank will be sold again. Should you buy it if it is only roughly 25 euros? Yes. Should you buy it in a pack when you don't need the stuff no I really have to say if you really want an American TD this thing is as the first premium tank which is first really first American premium tank destroyer I have to say it's a decent vehicle even special because in the American tank destroyer tree we don't have such vehicles we don't have paper thin armored tanks we have mediocre armored tanks with mediocre speed we have here really something extraordinary which is also in my opinion quite unique in the game because it has as a Waffen Traeger literally no armor this is normal but it has really good gun depression minus 10 and I have to say this is so amazing and I really do like this just a few range and the top speed is in my opinion the 
critic point. But yeah, do you have this tag? Do you like it? Who knows? <laughs> well, you know probably. Then write it in the comments. I really want to know what you think about this tank. I also hope that this again the replay um, the review was good. It was informative. I made, as I said on the beginning, a comprehension about other tier seven premium tank destroyers. Every, everyone which I got on to have experience on them. And yeah, as always, <laughs> thanks for watching and good luck on the battlefield.